Hello everyone, this is Edgar from Brash Monkey, and I'm going to show you a few demos that showcase some of the key functionality of Spriter support in a game engine. Uh, these demos were made with Construct2 from Scura.com, and you'll find a link for that below. And much thanks to Ashley Gullen, C2's developer, for his work in getting Spriter so fully integrated with C2. And I'm going to be using C2 and its plugin to show you what we're striving for when it comes to Spriter integration in any visual game authoring tool. And so the first thing I'm going to show you is how easy it is to just jump in and start making a game using modular animation. So uh, I have my Spriter project saved and I start a new project in Construct2, the empty project. And I navigate to my folder and drag an SCOM file or an SCML file into Construct2 and then I choose an event sheet for the initialization events, press OK, wait for the import to take place, and then if I run the layout immediately, I already have a 2D animated modular character to work with. And changing animations or any type of basic functionality is just as easy as you would expect from a regular sprite object. So I'm going to add a mouse event here. And I'm going to say, if you click on the left mouse button, then have the SCML plugin set the animation to the walk animation. And if I run the layout now, and I left click, then it plays the walk animation. So it's very easy to get started. Uh, here we've set up a more complex example and we basically have a platform character with all the basic animations and you can run double jump block etc and the first thing I'm going to show you is because these are tweened in real time they run exactly as they do in Spriter in the game engine so if you were to slow down time, for instance, you still maintain that 60 frame per second animation and you're just now generating extra frames in between to keep the animation smooth regardless of the playback speed of the animation. And the next thing I'm going to show you is character maps in Spriter. We have character maps that allow you to customize your character and you can apply them in the editor here and you can stack them on top of each other and create combinations and the same thing is possible at runtime so if I go into construct 2 I've set up some events to change the character map based off of these checkboxes and if I want to change the character's armor or I want to apply the cat skin or sword or an axe or any combination thereof and it's using the same animation data and so all your animations are intact you could use this to uh, do anything like what we've done here reskin the character you could even set up some variables in your uh, and give your player a menu or an interface to set up and choose different body parts and customize their character and then use character maps to allow custom characters in your game. The next thing I'm going to show you is because Construct2 imports Spriter and each Spriter object as a separate Construct2 object, you can also apply effects or do anything to any particular body part even if you're not doing it to the rest of the character. So I'm going to add a shader effect to the sword and the shield and uh, you can see it's got a cool glass effect that distorts the background and the shield has an animated shader that uh, creates a demonic waving effect and because of the way that the character maps and the objects work I can use that same set of events and it doesn't matter which character map I'm using the same effect automatically applies across uh, whichever weapon he's holding. 
The next thing I'll be demonstrating is action points. Now in this demo I put action points on the character's eyes and uh, you can see that in certain animations not both eyes are visible and so the action point just doesn't exist in those animations or on those frames. And then in Construct 2 I put events to move particle effects onto those action points and these action points can be attached to bones or just like any other sprite or object but at runtime you can ask what the location of these action points are so when I turn on eye particles it's adding it's moving a particle effect onto the eye at every frame of animation and it doesn't matter if I'm using frame by frame animation like the block is or any other type of tween animation because these locations are using the same type of animation as any other sprite or object. And then finally, the other new feature that I'm going to be demonstrating is animation blending. And this can be done for any implementation of Spriter. And so if you look closely, you can see that there is a instantaneous switch between the idle animation and the walking animation and the same thing for the walking animation to the running animation. And so I can turn on animation blending and it will smooth out the transitions. Now there's two ways to use animation blending with the new plugin. You can either tell it to blend to each animation as you switch to it, which is what's going on here. And another way you can use it is by telling Spriter you want to have two current animations and then you can choose whatever blend level between the two animations that you want. So as you can see here, I'm, as I drag to the right, it's becoming more of a run animation and the closer to the left I am, the more it blends towards the walk animation. And this is just one example usage. You could use it for a character that's getting more tired in their idle stance or maybe you have ten non-playable characters in the background and you want to mix different walks together to give each character a unique look and especially if you combine that with character maps you could have a ridiculous amount of variety in the background and so that's it for today's demonstration you can try this demo out in your browser with using the link below and thank you everyone for watching